This is the High School Coaches Profile brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer. I'm Chelsea Reber, and today we're visiting with Brian High's head football coach, Ross Rogers. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? Well, my dad was a high school football coach. So we moved around. I was born in Beeville, Texas, and he coached in South Texas for a while. Started school in Magnolia back when it was Class B school, one school. And uh, then we moved back to South Texas to Bishop and then to Alice and then to Colleen, and that's where we moved when I was uh, 14 years old. And my parents' house is still there. My mother still lives there. And so that's home. And what sports did you play growing up? Uh, football, basketball, baseball, tennis. Was football always your favorite? Well, my dad was a football coach. Yeah, it was. I liked whatever sport was in, in season. season. <laughs> yeah, and so whatever sport was in season, but you know, long term probably football. But uh, baseball was a, probably my you know as far as being really good in the sport. Probably that was my best sport as a pitcher. Who was your biggest influence during your childhood? My father. You were actually born during two a days, exactly. so it's kind of always been in your blood, huh? Yeah, born in two a days. It was hot in August in Beeville, Texas, and it was it's hot today in Bryan, Texas, and so I'm kind of used to everybody says, "Well, what are you gonna do about the heat?" Well, it's just hot in August, and you know it's never been a cool August. Some are hotter than others, so uh, but yeah. Let's take a quick trip down the road of your coaching career. I know it's been a lengthy one, but where all did you make stops and what kind of experience did you have in each place? Yeah, after playing ball at Sam Houston, I went to uh, Baylor to work for Coach Grant Taft and uh, as a GA and got my master's there for two years. And then I was hired as the head football coach at the age of 23 at Hempstead, Texas. And uh, for one year, I went to Waller for five years and then I went to Southwest Texas which is Texas State for five years as an offensive co coach there and then to Giddings and then am consolidated for 12 years from 88 to 299 and then uh, went back home to Colleen when they split Colleen High into two schools Harker Heights High School in Colleen so we moved back to uh, Colleen area and I started that school and we were there for seven seasons then I retired and sold helmets and shoulder pads with Riddell which is you know the largest helmet shoulder pad company in the world and uh, you know Brian decided to make a change and uh, I think they were looking for a younger shinier guy and uh, they told me they always liked me from then on. Anyway they asked me if I would come out of retirement and coach and that's what I did. What was that decision like to come out of retirement? Was that something you expected? Well I never planned to coach again but I knew there was a possibility and I, you know I uh, when I got out, it's not like I was just tired of coaching. It was just a situation that I felt like that I couldn't make the changes and the difference I wanted to make. And so I was probably going to have to move uh, maybe to Dallas area or maybe come back to the Houston area. My wife had a great job. And, and, and I said, well, you know, Riddell had been talking to me for two years. said, Coach, you know nearly everybody in the state of Texas. So, so I thought it might be a great opportunity, something I'd never done before, never been in sales like that. So, uh, yeah, but... I didn't plan to come back to coach, but I knew it wasn't a possibility that I wouldn't. I, that would, again, you know. Let's talk about that first head coaching job. It came at 23 years old. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced in that first year at Hempstead? Oh, you know, being growing up in a field house, I just kind of thought I knew everything. And probably did know more than other people, but still just all the nuances, all the, the booster clubs and the parent things that, you know, you can sit in the field house and you can be an assistant coach or you can be a player but you don't really understand all the things that has to, uh, the head coach has to do, just like Coach Sumlin at A&M or Coach Browse. I mean, there's so many more things. And Coach, I'd like to be in charge of offense, in charge of defense, but you just don't have time in taking care of the whole program. So that was probably a challenge. And, you know, and it was a school that had not been winning. We had to get some kids out of the band. We had to go get some kids that had not been playing for a couple of years so that we could field a team. And we were very competitive, which allowed me to get another job the next year. Now, you've experienced coaching at the college level, what is now Texas State. Why make the move back to high school? When I went there, I, I thought I would, because uh, probably in, when I was a GA, I always thought I'd be a college coach and thought I would be a head college coach. And so I went to Southwest, when I went to Southwest Texas, that was my idea, either to get my doctorate degree, because I already had my master's, or hopefully maybe make the right contacts to be a head football coach in college. And I was in on two jobs, uh, came real close at West Texas, uh, which is West Texas A&M now. 
when I was 32. It just fell through. I didn't get it. The next year, there were some changes in, on the staff, and I just felt like that uh, I would like to be a head coach again. And to be a head coach, if I needed to go back to high school, that's where I'd go. This is the High School Coaches Profile brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer. And right now we're visiting with Brian's football coach, Ross Rogers. Coach, you won a state championship with A&M Consolidated in 91. How special was that season for you? Well, you know, and I hate, because I was just read an article about in the Chronicle. It was unbelievable. My dad was there. He, my dad had won a bunch of football games, never won a state championship. My mother and dad were there, my brothers and sisters. And, you know, uh, in 89, we played for it. And we lost. And then we turned around in 90 and had a better team than that team in 89. And we had six players get hurt. And we couldn't finish We couldn't finish the year like we should have. And that was maybe the hugest disappointment I've ever suffered as a, uh, as a coach, to lose that game. Uh, because we didn't get beat. We got beat. We were physically beat up. And so turn around in 91 with a team that was basically re reloading and a sophomore quarterback in Jeff Watson and – and so we just didn't have a lot returning. Now, we had some good players, but not not what you'd say is a, was a great team on paper. And then for us to keep winning and stay lucky and stay healthy. And, uh, you know, so it was it was very, very special. I mean, it meant a lot to me as a, as a son of a Texas high school coach. Mm -hmm. And then turn around in 92, we went back to the state championship and got beat 28-24 in the last two minutes. So we won one out of four. Could have won all four and probably lucky just win one. Were the losses harder to take than oh, the win yeah. was to celebrate for? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just you, you remember coaches remember the losses more than the wins. I can remember tell you more about the losses we had than the year we won it. Then you go back to Colleen to a brand new school. You mentioned Harker Heights, and you win a district championship there in your first year. How did you make the kids buy in that quickly that year? I don't know, Chelsea. That's, you know, you just coach them, and 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 we had a young group because it was, they didn't we didn't open up as a JV year uh, like College Station or like Rudder did. We we had a, a freshman class went there for spring training. There was like 50 freshmen, 50 of them went back to Clean High, and we had about 50 freshmen who were going to be sophomores, and the seniors were bust over. The seniors that lived in Colleen had to stay at Colleen, but the kids that lived in uh, Harker Heights they could choose to finish at Colleen High. But if they had a Harker Heights residence, they could come to Clean High. I mean, to Harker Heights. Mm -hmm. And so we had a real mixture. You know, we had a real young ball club. And we had about five or six really good seniors. And we had about four or five really good juniors. But it was basically a sophomore ball club. But uh, the, the schedule was probably right. We were able to play some people we could play with early. And then as we got better and better, uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty much like the 91 year. I mean, we only went uh, three deep that year. But... To start a high school and then to win the district and then turn around and go to the third round and lost a game we probably could have won then. So uh, it was just, I guess the kids, you know, because all we can do is coach them. The kids got to come together. I want to go back to when you played at Sam Houston. What kind of experience did you have playing ball in college and maybe even in your high school years? Those kind of experiences that help you relate to the kids you coach. Well, I just know that, you know, I was just talking to a young man in here a while ago. You get one chance to be able to do play everything in high school, and and you know so, you know these kids. The thing about high school kids and parents, they grow up in little league and they grow up in seventh grade, and so the same parents been in sitting in stands together basically since they were twelve, thirteen, fourteen years old. So it's a real bonding that is very unique because when you go to college. Some of the parents get to know each other, but it's not like they knew they knew Ross playing as a you know eighth grader at Nolan Middle School, and so it's just a unique. You get two different perspectives. I've got some great high school buddies that uh, I played with, and we still get together with our, with our wives, and uh, but some college buddies. You know, uh, the time we spent because you live with them, and that's when we had dorms, and we we didn't spread it, scatter out all over Huntsville. We all lived in around the, the gym there. And so I don't think that some of the college today have a perspective of how close we all got. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing is it, you know, basically we were like brothers because brothers we did live together and ate together. And then of course, you know, practice together. And, and uh, you know, it was, it was, it was fun for me. I, college was a great experience. 
we talked about a little bit of retirement time. How do you think that time off from coaching benefited you coming back now? It'd be just like you do anything. You've done something for a while and then you, you go and do something else or just don't work for a while. You get a new perspective mm -hmm. and certain things you learn that you would never change. And I said, you know, I could, maybe I could change that. So I told, like talk, Dr. Wallace, when he hired me, I said, you're getting the guy has got new energy. Now, how long I can keep this energy, I don't know, because this, this, this heat will test you. It's definitely pretty draining. Mm -hmm. Now, in some past interviews, you've said this Brian job was your dream job. How's living the dream been so far? It's been tough, but, but it's, not beca it's not because of the, sc uh, the school district. And I, I want to clear, clarify that because... You know, we had unbelievable success at Consolidate. But when I was a young coach, Consolidate was not winning that big. Bryan was the biggest school in the whole area. He had this gorgeous stadium. Uh, you know, had 3,800 or 900 kids going to school. So, yeah, you sit there at the field house and you're working at Hempstead or you're working at Waller, and you said, you know, and those were small schools. Waller was kind of grown now, but you think, golly, man, it'd be unbelievably there. So, like, Temple was a great job. Bryan was a great job. Lufkin, that was all the young coaches around the state. So, so yeah, I, I came up here and played uh, in several Briarcrest uh, member guests when I was 24, five years old with some guys, I, a guy I knew up from Brian, and I got to know a lot of people. So I thought, well, if Coach Green ever gets out, maybe I'll have a chance at it. And it's funny that when I did have a chance to get it, we just won, it consolidated, and they wanted me to move across the street. And I, I chose not to do that at that time. And so, coming back to Brian, what, what makes a great high school job uh, is you've got enough numbers to be, because you can't be the smallest 5A in the state or the large, you know, mm -hmm. you'd like to be largest, but you've got to have administration that wants you to have success. And mm -hmm. Dr. Wallace and his team is, wants us to be good at everything, academics, athletics, uh, fine arts, whatever. And so, they've given us the ability to, to I think build this program in the right way. We'll be back after these messages with more from Brian Viking head football coach Ross Rogers for the high school coaches profile brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer. Welcome back to the high school coaches profile brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer. We're visiting with Brian High football coach Ross Rogers. Coach, you were inducted into the High School Coaches Association Hall of Honor in 2011. Your father was inducted in 1985, and your induction made you only the second father-son duo in the Hall of Honor. What did that mean to you? Great thrill. And, and you know, and Dad wasn't doing very good, but uh, he, we got him in his wheelchair, and he went to the, you know, to the induction, which I was at his induction in 85. So it just was, you know, it's been a great life. I mean, you got doctors. And, and uh, doctors have sons or doctors. You see lawyers, a lot of lawyers have their sons. My dad was a coach, and, and then for him to be put in the Hall of Honor, and then while he was still living for, uh, for my, our family to do that again, it was, it was special. Over the years, the game has obviously evolved, and the kids are different too. How has your coaching style changed since the beginning? I don't think it's changed much because uh, the kids are kids. Parents have changed. You know, I think they're a little more involved. Where used to, they were a little more tougher, and they'd send you send that with John out and say, "John, well, the coach said you did that." Or the principal, I think the parents get a little more involved today. Maybe some of that's good. Maybe some of it's bad. Uh, but the kids are the same, and, and you know, we just try to, you know, I tell them uh, pretty much to sum it up. And I told the guys when I came to Brian, I said, "Guys, I care, and when y'all care as much as I care, we're gonna be good." What would you say is the toughest part of your job? Oh, seeing the trials and tribulations of kids that don't understand what it takes for commitment. And so when they, they, they have a hiccup or they quit and then they want to come back and then dealing, because I want to help every kid, but you, you still got to keep the big picture. And, you know, every fall there's kids that come back that decided not to play last spring. And, and now all of a sudden it's summer and it's their senior year and they want to play. Uh, Deciding how to work those situations out, most time we give, if they're a kid that we think is worth, that's not done, he's not killed anybody or anything like that. <laughs> you know, we work out a probationary period where they don't play, they just practice something. And if they live through the probation, then, uh, then they, other guys just have to trust me that I've done what's best for that kid, even though sometimes it may not. It's hard decisions. Those kind of things to me are the hardest decisions. And I'm lucky to have a lot of good coaches around me. 
on the flip side of the coin, what would you say is the most rewarding part of your job? You know, I, I love love all the kids that, you know, different ways that played for me over the years. You know, some of them are pretty old right now. <laughs> I'm reminding them that all the time. I say, dang, you're not looking too good. But uh, I've enjoyed my coaching staffs. I really have. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to build my relationship with the kids, but, you know, the coaches that come together and spend so much time and wives that let us work up here all so much of the time, and the, and the relationships that, that we've gotten to build, they're like extended family, if not even family. Mm -hmm. And so those, you know, I've got a coach now at, at Refugio who's won a state championship, Jason Herring, who was with me, Tim Buchanan, who was with me for years, and he won five state championships, and then Coach e. Prosper won. So, you know, sometimes while I was not coaching, I was living my coaching life through these guys. How do you leave a door? You know. Yeah. How do you prepare those assistant coaches, the guys under you? How do you prepare them for their next step? I don't mind delegating. Some coaches are real hands-on, mm -hmm. and and certainly I have certain ideas how we're going to do things. But I, I like I like to delegate power, and I like people to have a big input, and then, you know, and then look at them and say, hey, we're not doing as well as we could on that. Let's look at it a different way. But. So by giving them some power, mm -hmm. I think that uh, helps them understand what it's going to take when, you know, because to be a good high school coach, and especially to be the head foot, the head coach of the school, you know, of your school, you got to understand that volleyball is important tonight too, and that cross country, and you just can't be tunneling. And I think some of the coaches that may have won a lot of games, but maybe not. They don't survive it very long because they don't worry about everybody, everything else. And I think that's one thing that all the coaches have worked with us. They understand it's a total problem. Let's go back to the kids. You've coached several over the years. But what makes a kid memorable for you? I don't know. They're all memorable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of the ones that, you know, that did have but one great play. Had a, as You know, you remember that? I don't know. That's a hard question because... You know, the guys that may have played for three, four years, mm -hmm. they played, you know, like a Jeff Watson. They won state as a sophomore, went, went back to the finals as a junior, and then we got beat in the quarterfinals. When he, so he played a lot of ball games. You know, Troy Walters, who won the Blitnikoff Award, and now he's coaching at Colorado. You know, he was starting receiver three years. Lee Fedora, getting to coach him his junior and senior year. Uh, had a couple of guys at Waller that were just unbelievable players and played starting for me for three years. Uh, Z Dominic Ziegler, who's up, up at Baylor, is a I, think, I, don't, I forget what he's over now. He's part of the football coaching staff. But he's over something uh, football. I don't know. Coach Browell's got him some mm -hmm. kind of title, but he was just a you know great kid. So you know, I've had some. I may have not had anybody that went on to be all pro or even start. We didn't, never even coached really anybody started in the NFL, but. Had someone that had some great high school careers as well as some pretty good college careers. You mentioned your dad being the biggest influence in your childhood. How does it make you feel when you know that some of these guys say that about you? Well, you, you have to, you know, you have to take ownership in that. And they're, you know, as I tell them, they go home tonight or this in the afternoon. Their little brother and sister, or somebody across the street, seeing how they act. Well. Those kids are acting, acting, they're seeing how I act too. <laughs> this is the High School Coaches Profile brought to you by Kelly Burt Dozer. We're visiting with Brian's Ross Rogers. Let's talk a little bit about your school now. Why do you love being a Brian Viking? It's in the moment. You know, I was head coach at Hempstead, and that was really a great job, and attacked it that way. Well, the next year I went to Waller, and that, they were arch rivals. Went to Southwest Texas to coach. And we finished every year against Sam Houston. So I played at Sam Houston, coach, and then I go to go home to Clean Harker Heights, and we take. I, I was the quarterback, Clean, and we built that stadium when I was there. And all of a sudden, I'm coaching against Clean High, and then I came back to Brown where I've been consolidated. So, you know, it's it's kind of. Uh, I, I just enjoyed the people the way they've opened their arms and 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 felt like that maybe I could get this thing turned around and gave us all the opportunity to do it. 
Now, when you were previously at A&M Consolidated, the Crosstown Showdown versus Bryan was obviously the big rivalry. Now you have four area high schools all competing in the same district. How does that change up the rivalry feel in the community? I think it's just going to evolve. It's Crosstown Showdowns now, you know. Or how do I put it? I forget what I'm saying. But, you know, because you've got so many different ways to look at it because Consolidated and Bryan for the present will continue to be a big rivalry, but that may fade as Rudder and Bryan become. I know right now the College Station Consol may be bigger than the, than our rival with Consol. Uh, so I don't know uh, kind of how to answer that. I think that their their rivalry is probably bigger than us and Rudder. Now once Rudder beats us, which I hope it doesn't happen while I'm coaching, that might change that as as well. But but still all the cross town games it just really makes a great atmosphere makes it a little bit easier on traveling too oh and getting home <laughs> getting home nobody yes. minds traveling to it it's getting back <laughs> that is definitely that's definitely everybody's true. excited getting there you know now the summer has just flown by you guys have just now started two a days and things are picking up right back into gear brian high is coming off of a great season last year what are you most excited about this upcoming football season to do it again you know, we don't want to be a flash in the pan. And our motto or our theme this year is back-to-back. -back. And we finish every practice by, you know, that's our chant. And uh, and so if we, have, if we have attention to detail, we have the ability, even though it's going to be tough to do. But that's that's the, that's what's the fun about showing up every day to so see if we can do this again in 2015. And for someone who has coached several years, I've loved when you just said, in the moment. You're, it's, yes, there's been great accomplishments and great memories, but it's really about now. Yeah. And we'll worry about that other later. Yeah. We'll worry about and I've already been later. retired for a while and I, and I couldn't remember much about that. So I'm really, the older you get, the less you remember. So I'm really, you really have to live in the now. Yeah. <laughs> now you, we've talked about it. You've already created such a great legacy. Um, but years from now, when someone brings up Ross Rogers at Brian High, what do you hope is said about your time here as a Viking? Well, he worked hard at it, you know, and worked hard everywhere I've been. And, and, I, and when I can't work hard, I don't want to do it anymore. And so, you know, he worked hard and, and, you know, for one year we've got Brian back to where Brian wanted to be. And Brian was for years and years. And, you know, th things just happen. I mean, you know, Rome wasn't torn down a day or built in a day, and, and some things over a period of time just started to tear Brian down. And and then you divide into Coach Ballard, you know, was here. He had the smallest, he was one of the smaller 5As in the state. Rudder was one of the smallest 4As. So those are two recipes for failure. And so by allowing Dr. Wallace and, and, the, and the zoning committee, allowing us to be a big 5A and give Rudder more kids, I mean, that's a that's a recipe for some success. And, uh, you know, I, I would hope that before I'm through that we play at uh, Cowboy Stadium or NG State for a state championship. That's what I'd love to give the Bryan Vikings, and uh, I'd like to be a part of that. But I know how tough that will be. Mm -hmm. But all we can do is come in here and, and win district. The first thing you want to do is win district every year. And then every game after that is just gravy. One more, one more. Sometimes you just one. You know, that's all you get. Because it you know, this by district games here are tough. Because mm -hmm. when you hut, I mean, Maynard last year we had a down year. They had more physical built than maybe anybody we played. We just played really well early and got ahead, but we, we could have played Temple. Temple played in the state finals. And it's just, uh, you know, in this region, I don't care who you are, you're, you're very lucky to get to the state championship or to the semifinals getting out of this region. Well, Coach Rogers, thank you for the time today, and best of luck this season in uh, getting back to that district championship. That's our, that's our goal, back to back. Thanks again to Brian High head football coach Ross Rogers for being today's high school coach's profile, brought to you by Kelly Bird Dozer. I'm Chelsea Reber for Sports Radio 1150 and The Zone 102.7 FM.